You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and as some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Don Chorus Miko's Path. So, I've decided to try and get you guys eight videos a week. Um, it might be a little difficult for me. I just I enjoy pushing content out for you guys. I know you guys enjoy. You guys eat it up. My metrics. Ooh, excuse me, my, my analytics and my metrics are, like, going through the friggin' roof, so. <laughs> oh, I gotta feed that algorithm, and I enjoy what I do, so. <laughs> anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it. We were, uh, talking to Lake, so sit back and enjoy the video. All right. I have no choice but to enter the room, pulled in by Lake. Suddenly, he realizes what he's doing and lets go of my cuff, blushing. Oh, I, uh, think I got a little carried away. Sorry. I pat his head twice, shaking my head. It would take much more than that to anger me, Lake. He says nothing, apparently still embarrassed. Somehow he's even cuter when he's flustered like this. I look around the room, expecting to see clothes and trash on the beds and floor after Lake's words, but there's not even a single t-shirt lying around. There are a few books lying on the desk, a suitcase on the floor, and a pack of nuts on one of the beds. If he calls this a mess, then I wonder what he thought of my room back in the dorms. The room itself is bigger than mine. There are two beds, both smaller than the one in my room, and a bigger window. Where's Jorgen? You're all alone here? He went outside with a book. He said that it's nicer here than inside, and that he's not going to spend the whole day indoors. I agree with him. Oh, one second, guys. I think I've got a sneeze. Yep, got a sneeze. Oh, Lord, that was a double sneeze. I'm back. I agree with him, but I've just been on a walk. Now all I want to do is warm myself up. Oh, Carvin, how about we go to the sauna now? What do you say? How can I say no to those puppy eyes? Or in this case, lion eyes. Not like I was planning on declining anyway. I'm looking forward to it just as much as he is. I say that it's just what I wanted to hear. Let's go. And here we are. Entering the locker room, we're greeted by the distinctive smell of chlorine. There's only one joint locker room for the sauna and the pool, so that's not a surprise. As I take a full lungful of it, I'm instantly flooded by a wave of memories from various locker rooms I've been in throughout my life. This one is fairly small, which is to be expected from a moderately sized guest house, which is just around 15 lockers and two rows and two benches between them. We are the only ones here at the moment, but, the two, but two of the lockers are already taken. I hope that those two are at the pool. I suppose that the sauna here would be big enough for the four of us, but I hope I would be here alone with Lake. It's easier to talk when it's just the two of us. I took my socks and shoes off back at the door, so now I only have to stash them in my locker. Lake chooses a locker on the opposite wall, stashing his flannel shirt into it. I should hurry up. The tiled floor feels so cold in my bare paws. Taking off my t-shirt, I shiver in the cold, humid air. Locker rooms always make me feel a bit giddy. I guess it's probably the case for most gays and bi guys. It's no, co it's no coincidence that so many gay fantasies involve locker rooms. It's the first place where we can explore our sexuality, even if we have to do it sneakily. Taking curious glances in locker rooms is probably how most of us started. Well, I got lost in my thoughts. Lick already stripped to his underwear and, pull and put all of his clothes into the locker. In Finland, nudity is nothing out of the ordinary, so there are plenty of times to see each other naked, and we feel completely comfortable like that. Nobody rushes to cover themselves from changing into a swimsuit, and of course, we always get into the sauna nude. I still shouldn't stare, but it wouldn't hurt to take a peek or two, right? Just out of curiosity. But this is not a lake run, so we're not getting lake penis this run. Why I said that? It sounds weird! Don't. Although the thought is tempting, it would feel weird trying to sneak a peek at my friend. Okay, I should probably finish undressing too. I can look at him all I want in the sauna anyway. I take off the rest of my clothes, folding them neatly and stacking them inside the locker. Okay, you ready? I nod in response, closing my locker and turning the key. Remembering what happened to the previous key I held in my paw, I decide not to take it with me, but keep it in the lock. Somehow I can't imagine another student wanting to steal my underwear. Oh hey, I'm gonna have to blur that. I join Lake in the showers. There are no separate stalls, just one row of shower heads extending from the wall, and I take the spot next to him. Nope, let me save it right here, guys. Hmm. 
Nah, cold! I chuckle quietly. Looks like the lake is even less cold resistant than I am. I press the button and water starts pouring onto me. Ah, it really is cold! I wash myself quickly, rubbing liquid soap into my fur, paying special attention to my armpits and groin. It's important to be squeaky clean before the sauna. The porous wood of the sauna benches soak up sweat easily. It's better not to carry any bacteria into the sauna on our bodies. Okay, see you there. Lake finishes his shower in under a minute, springing out of the cold water and hopping through the cold tiled floor, grabbing a towel on his way and reaching the men's sauna, sauna door. Yeah, I'll join you in a minute. Lake disappears inside the sauna, closing the glass door behind him. I finish the shower quickly. Not really keen on staying in the cold water any longer. We came here to warm ourselves up, after all. I walk away from the shower, completely soaked, my wet fur clinging to my body. There's a stack of fresh towels at the entrance to the sauna. Only now I remember that, it, that I didn't bring one with me. Bless this guest house. I take one... Oh, one second, guys. I got something in my eye! I take one and start rubbing my fur vigorously to get rid of as much moisture as I can before entering. No point in drying myself off completely. I'm going to be soaking wet in no time anyway. I open the sauna door and enter, immediately feeling the intense heat of burning coals on my fur. Ah, this is just what I needed. Huh, this place is really neat. Not only is it surprisingly big, but it has a glazed wall too. This is one of the fanciest saunas I've ever been in. The ones back home are usually a bit less fancy. Lake is sitting on a middle bench with his eyes closed, relaxing. I decide to take the opposite bench. The whole sauna is ours for now anyway, and it'll be easier to talk if we are facing each other. The heated wooden floor burns my paws, so I quickly spread the towel on the lowest bench and sit down on it. I prefer to work my way up. I prefer to work my way up than go for the hottest spot first. Phew, I really missed this. I lean back on the wooden bench, feeling the tension slowly escaping my body. There's no new age music in the sauna, no bird chirping played from the speakers, which is just how it should be. Lake is still sitting with his eyes closed, but I can hear a quiet, content rumbling emanating from his chest. His chest rises and falls steadily with his deep breaths. It's so quiet here that I can actually hear him breathing. Lake! <laughs> Cutie. He opens his eyes finally and looks at me, corners of his snout curving upwards into a slight smile. Carbon. This is a really cool sauna. I know, I was happy that there's a sauna here at all, but this? A glazed wall? Now that's cool. And what a view it has! Yeah, the views are certainly magnificent. The first drops of sweat start to dribble down the light-colored fur on Lake's torso. It's really hot and humid here. He must have poured like half a bucket of water on the rocks before I came here. It's a shame that there's no lake outside the guest house, though. Oh, by the way, that's not your real name, is it? Lake, I mean. Well, what made you think so? One second, guys. Lake chuckles quietly and looks outside the window. I was wondering why you didn't ask about that earlier, actually. I had the rare chance to choose a name for myself, and I decided to go with an English one. I wanted something easy to pronounce, too. I knew I would move out of the country, so I wanted to have a name that would remind me of Finland. I'm gonna save it right here, guys. And what is more Finnish than lakes? Apart from saunas, of course, but sauna does not really make a good name. I can relate to that. How did it work in your case? Lake's expression doesn't change, but I can see reluctance in his eyes. That's a story for another... That's a story for another time. I like your name. It's pretty unusual. He looks at me with his lively crimson eyes again. Oh, oh, changing position. One second. He looks really handsome in the warm light of the evening sun. Carvin? There's a certain softness in his voice that I haven't noticed before. My heart is hammering in my chest. I shouldn't stay in the sauna much longer. You and Torolf. How did you two get to know each other? Torolf. The slight smiley on his face all the time stays there, but now it looks more apologetic than happy, and I can tell that he is a bit flustered. He's an interesting guy, but I'm sure you've noticed that much yourself already. We met, we've met at the cocktail place not far from the university soon after I moved here. I was sitting alone there. He sat down next to me at the bar and started a conversation. Since then, we meet from time to time. 
I don't know many other students here, and it's nice to have someone you can visit sometimes. Thud. 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 I can hear my heartbeat. This isn't good. We weren't here very long, but I think that it's time to leave. I'd better go now. You want to stay? You want to stay some more? Nah, I'm going to. I've had enough heat for a while now. We both stand up and grab our towels, leaving the sauna. We step into the showers, both panting heavily, completely drenched with sweat dripping from our fur. How come they have such a fancy sauna here, but only those lame, cold showers here? But what I would give for a real lake to hop into right now. Oh yeah, that would be nice. Cooling down is no less important to the sauna experience than sitting in the sauna itself. Yeah, I'd hop into a lake in a heartbeat. St Stop it! We know what you're doing! Wait. Wasn't there a door outside back in the corridor? Lady looks at me with a mischievous smile. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I think so. What if someone sees us, though? Come on, who could see us here? And even if they did, what would they do? Throw us out into the snow? It was your idea anyway. Don't back out of it now. I throw the towel onto a nearby bench. Oh, what the hell? It's good to do something crazy once in a while. Okay. Let's do this. Opening the door, we step out into the cold arctic air. A gust of wind ruffles our bare fur, making us both shiver. Okay, on three. One, two, three! We both jump into the fresh snow that's covering the ground with a thick layer. A jolt of adrenaline hits me immediately. Forcing my body to cooperate with me, I start rolling around, rubbing the snow into my fur. So cold! Ugh! I gasp wildly, feeling a burning sensation on my skin. Next to me, Lake emits a high-pitched squeal, comically springing up from the snow, all shivering. I stand up, too, feeling a bit lightheaded and absolutely freezing. The snow melts down in my fur, and the steam billows off our silhouettes into the evening air. Lake comes closer to me, panting, his breath turning into white clouds. He locks his eyes with mine, and we both laugh with pure joy. Enough? Yeah, definitely enough. Together, we return to the warm inside, invigorated by the experience. We arrive at the cafeteria at exactly 1600, so almost everyone is already here. 16, 16 o'clock, I'll just say 16 o'clock. Afternoon light fills the room with a golden glow, giving it a more relaxed atmosphere, much different than the energetic mood that seemed to permeate the room during lunch. The voices in the cafeteria seem to be quieter, too. Maybe it's the peacefulness of this pace slowly influencing everyone here. Let me save it right here, guys. One second. Oh, something's got me all stuffy today. Everyone from our table is already here. Wait, except for Klaus. I look around the room, but I can't see him anywhere else either. Maybe he will be late again. Bjorn notices me and waves from behind the table. Hey there, Carbon. You're joining us again? Yeah, you're good company. I stand beside Miko, giving him a head pat. He turns his head around and smiles at me. Carbon? Hello, good to see you again, Carvin. I sit down next to Miko, and the sound of the chair scratching against the wooden floor reverberating through the room. Good to see you all again, too. So, did I miss anything? Not really. We all arrived maybe a few minutes ago. I was just asking Travis if he had seen the swimming pool or the sauna here. And I meant to reply that not yet, so if you're up for it, we can go after dinner. Well, maybe not straight after, but yeah, I'm curious how they look. So far, everything in this guest house was a pleasant surprise. Yeah, it makes you think where... Yeah, it makes you think where is the catch. <laughs> maybe there isn't any. I wouldn't worry about it. I'd rather enjoy myself while we're here. I look in the direction of the table next to ours, where Lake sat during lunch. He already made it here before me. Now he's talking with someone sitting beside him, gesticulating wildly. Anyway, I wonder what we will get for dinner. Lunch was pretty fabulous. I wonder if they can top that now. There's Rune beside him, too, chatting again with Coach. Those two really get along well, don't they? Have you been in the sauna here, Carvin? Oh, sorry? Uh, sauna, yeah. Sorry, I was, wasn't really listening. Yeah, I've just come back from there. Oh, it's really stunning. Quite big, so that 15 folks could get in easily so it would still be comfortable. But at the same time, it feels cozy. There's a nice view from there, too. 
Their table is just next to ours, and we're at the very end of the room, so it shouldn't bother anyone. Well, maybe we should do a group trip there. What do you say? You know, I haven't been in many yet. I'm not really sure if I enjoy it. You go ahead, though. Oh, what about you, Miko? Hey, wake up, are you there? So far, Miko was spacing out pretty hard, looking somewhere in a distance with a gloomy look on his snout. Uh, what were we talking about? Oh, we want to visit the sauna here. Are you in? No, I'm always in when there's a sauna involved. And you, Carvin? Sorry for changing the topic, but how about we join our table with that one? My friends are sitting there too, and we're at the end of the cafeteria, so that shouldn't make a difference to anyone. I point in the direction of the other table, looking around at everyone else. Looking around at everyone at ours. <clears throat> I'd be there for it. I see Jorgen sitting there too. Of course, no problem. I don't know them yet, but I'd gladly change that. Miko, what do you say? Sure, why not? Miko puts both his paws on his lap, holding one with the other. He seems tense for some reason. Okay, I better go there first and ask if they're fine with us invading their lives like that, too. Bjorn stands up and goes to the other table, approaching Coach and talking with him for a brief moment before returning. Okay, everyone, stand up. We're moving this thing. We all stand up, lift the table, and join it with the other one. Hello there. Hope you don't mind us joining. We were just about... We were just talking about the facilities here. Were any of you in the swimming pool or sauna here yet? Of course not. We're glad to see some new faces. No, oh, I was in the sauna with Carvin. It's really neat. If you weren't there yet, you should go. Yeah, we visited the pool with Devin. It's fine, not very big, but enough to get some speed. Oh, and there's quite a view from there. But by the way, I believe that I haven't introduced myself yet. I'm Bjorn, studying neurology. Oh, good idea. How about we all introduce ourselves? I don't know most of you yet. I'm Rune, currently in the fourth year of my studies, neuroscience. Apart from that, I also play basketball and have a few other hobbies I try to cultivate whenever I have the time. I'm Travis, studying neuroscience too, but I'm in my first year. I moved to Norway from the US, but I'm half American, half Japanese. I like anime and JRPG games, Korean cuisine, and some good tea from time to time. Nothing better than a good cup of green tea. True, Japanese cinch is my reason to live. I'm more of a fan of matcha. I always start my day with one, but I wouldn't say no to sencha. Um, I'm Miko, and I study marine biology with a specialization in cetaceans. I'm a freshman, and I moved here from Finland, just like Carvin here. I make music in my free time, and I like anime, too. Oh, yes. I believe we mostly know each other already. I'm Carvin, and as, I, and as Miko just said, I moved here from Finland. I study cognitive science, and in my free time, I dabble in photography, both digital and analog. So, I'm Lake, and like Miko and Carvin, I moved here from Finland. I'm a freshman, too, only I study astrophysics. I'm happy to meet you all. I'm Jorgen, in the second year of astrophysics studies. I like literature, and I don't like noise. Everyone is looking at Coach expectantly. Only after a moment, he understands that they're waiting for him to introduce himself, too. That's what he gets for sitting with students, I guess. Um, so... I'm Devin. I believe you all know me. I'm a coach at our university, and technically I'm here to supervise you. I moved here from the U.S. less than a year ago, so I'm still just acclimating here. He is suddenly interrupted by the lady from the reception who came with our dinner. She greets us and starts putting plates of food down on the table. First there's some soup, pea-colored and creamy, smelling of marjoram and thyme. Then, a few dishes filled with various stuff, mashed potatoes sprinkled with dill, whole-baked carrots and veggie balls, and a jug of sauce. And finally, she puts down two platters full of pankeker, thin Norwegian pancakes, topped with some dark blue jam and various fruits. Ooh, are those blueberries? I love blueberries. Just don't eat them all. There's eight of us here, Rune. Shush, you know I'm not like that. Hmm, I think it's our sapa. Swedish pea soup. It's interesting, we rarely have soups this thick. And veggie balls. Looks like we have a Swedish dinner today. Mmm, just as if we were waiting... Mmm, just as if we were eating in a Yukia restaurant. I've never been to one. Are they good? The food here looks delicious for sure. Well, they're not as good as this place, but for the price, the value is really good. 
Oh, I used to go there a lot back when I was in high school. I'd grab my books to go there to study, taking advantage of the unlimited coffee refill they have there. You were going to Yukia to study? Those are words I never expected to hear from anybody. You're really lucky you have them here. We had maybe one in the whole state. No, by the way, Carvin, any luck with the key? I gulp loudly, swallowing a huge chunk of carrot and start coughing. I didn't tell most of them about the key yet, and I didn't really intend to. I don't really like to talk about my failures and misfortunes. Oh, uh, no luck there yet, unfortunately. Maybe the janitor will find it eventually, and I keep my eyes open, too. Huh. What about your key, Carvin? Did you lose it somewhere? Yeah, after lunch it disappeared somewhere. Oh, one second. Why? Did you buy... Did you by any chance find a key lying somewhere? Okay, guys, I'm going to save it right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell until the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!